This video is sponsored by Morning Brew. If you've been waiting years for a round Apple Watch, and you don't mind that it's not made by Apple, have I got a review for you. As its brand name implies, this is the third major smartwatch from Huawei, which means it's also exciting for we Android types. See, back in 2015, Huawei collaborated with a veteran wristwatch designer to create one of the most beautiful smartwatches devised up to that point. And we've pretty much been waiting for the company to recapture that particular flavor of elegance ever since. Well, it might have taken six years, but after two weeks with the Huawei Watch 3, I gotta say, it was worth the wait. Bracketed between 22mm lugs, the 46mm casing is 5 atmosphere water resistant, made from polished stainless steel that blends into a ceramic cap on the back, punctuated by a heart rate sensor beneath a sapphire window. On the flip side, the face is dominated by a gorgeous 1.4-inch AMOLED with a thousand nit peak brightness, which means I never had trouble seeing it, no matter how brightly the sun hit it. And with a pixel density about on par with Fossil's Gen 5 smartwatches, the screen is also sharp enough that I didn't want to stop looking at it. That's thanks also to the 30 or so preloaded watch faces, some of which are enchanting enough to make me wish I could use them on all my watches. And the display gets one more lovely shot in the arm from the domed glass crystal over the top, whose curves also make swiping through the software much more pleasant than the sheer sided glass on other watches. But as I often say, my favorite part of the interface on well-designed watches is that you don't need to touch the screen for everything. Yep, this isn't just for looks, it's an active digital crown, useful for everything from setting timers to scrolling lists. And as on the Moto 360, it's placed at the two o'clock position to make it less prone to accidental activation when you bend your wrist. Every time you scroll, you feel little micro clicks. As on the Apple Watch, it's a surprisingly convincing simulacrum of a mechanism, ticking away with each tenth of a turn. And if you're tired of the Cupertino comparisons, this will be the last one. I'm very glad Huawei offers the option to dispense with the Apple aping cloud of app bubbles for a menu in favor of a more straightforward list. The only other button is a variable function pusher at the four o'clock position, which you can map to any app you like. The software does its best to complement the Watch 3's excellent hardware with a degree of thoughtful polish that wasn't possible on Huawei's earlier GT series. That's because instead of a bare-bones operating system that prioritizes battery life above all, the Watch 3 essentially runs a custom fork of Android that Huawei calls Harmony OS 2. So it can run full-on third-party apps, like the excellent preloaded voice memo app that every smartwatch should offer. It can send and receive calls and messages independently of a phone, thanks to a built-in eSIM. And it can leverage its custom processor and two gigs of RAM to elevate the interface with tiny touches, like slowly fading out the display once it times out, rather than flipping it off like a light switch. You also get handy features like a toggle that keeps the screen on for up to five minutes at a time, useful if you're keeping an eye on the countdown timer, which counts among its less useful features, a ticking sound effect that you'll either love or love to hate. Folks, if the story stopped there, I'd have already bought the Huawei Watch 3 to add to my own watch box, steep price tag notwithstanding. But as always, there are downsides to go with the ups, and I'll get to them right after this. Wake up, grab my phone, and fall right into the social feeds. That's how I've kicked off pretty much every morning for the past few years, and let me tell you, it's basically the worst way to wake up. Fortunately, today's sponsor has a better way to start the day. This video is brought to you by Morning Brew, a free daily newsletter that gets you up to speed on the latest in tech, business, and finance in about five minutes. Now, newsletters have never been my thing. I've long thought of them as just another way to clutter up my inbox. But I gotta say, Morning Brew's pretty fresh. The format is clean, the tone is witty, without being too cute about things, and the stories are actually interesting. Like, for example, the other day I read in a Morning Brew story that 41% of employees globally are considering leaving their employer this year. Did you know that? Because I, I didn't. Best of all, Morning Brew is completely free, and it takes less than 15 seconds to sign up, so there's really no reason not to. 
Hit the link in the description to subscribe today, and thanks to Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. The Huawei Watch 3's disadvantages begin in familiar territory, both literally and figuratively, and I'll take the former first. If you live in the US, you shouldn't buy this watch, even if you can find one to import, because you'll effectively get a half-broken watch. The eSIM won't activate, so you lose the standalone phone, and while I'm all for switching to the metric system, until we do, I'd like to have the Imperial option at least. Worse yet, the only way to get additional apps on the watch is through Huawei's own app gallery, which would not function on my device. In fact, to work at all, the watch requires you to download the Huawei Health app and its associated framework, which at the moment needs to happen through your phone browser, not the Google Play Store. Andy Boxhall at Digital Trends points out that while this process is a little easier using the watch with the iPhone, there are major limitations to that experience as well. I'll link his review below. Even once I got it set up on my Samsung Galaxy Fold 2 and Motorola Razr 5G, there were odd bugs when using it with either. The watch seldom got my location right. Even after an update, it took well over a week for it to realize that I had left Norfolk, Virginia to come home to Greenpoint, Brooklyn. The location-dependent tide tables have remained blank on all my watch faces since I unboxed it. And if you're used to the rich notification support you can find elsewhere, well, you won't find it here. On a Wear OS watch, I can read most of the first paragraph of an email to see if I need to pull out my phone. I can dictate or choose a pre-programmed reply if I need to respond quickly from my wrist. The Huawei Watch 3 gives me almost none of that. Add in some odd bugs, like raised awake not always working, emojis coming across as asterisks, and telegram notifications sometimes coming in quadruplicate. And from a notification standpoint, it feels a lot more like a fitness band than a nearly $500 smartwatch. Now, if fitness is your focus, maybe you'll find enough to like that you can forgive those shortfalls. I mean, you can take your skin temperature with this watch, you can keep an eye on your blood oxygen, or swap out the leather strap for silicone and fire up Huawei workouts, if a virtual coach praising you in an unidentifiable regional dialect is what gets your legs a pumping. You went to, you took 37 minutes, 37 seconds, recent. One mile average pace, 17 minutes, 26 seconds per mile. Your current heart rate is 131. And even with the extra load imparted by GPS, you won't have trouble making it to the end of the day. Actually, with typical use, I averaged about 51 hours before I had to drop this on its magnetic charging puck. It charges wirelessly, but sadly, it won't charge reliably on a phone's reverse wireless charging mode. On my Fold 2 and Flip, the best I got was about a 20% boost before the phone gave up, and I had even worse luck on standard Qi charging pads. Just don't forget your puck when you go on the road. Now, Harmony OS is in its early days, and I expect it to advance rapidly. Even during my review period, I received two updates in as many weeks. I mean, that fast evolution is all but required if Huawei is to innovate past the roadblocks the US government has thrown in front of it. In a few months' time, this watch may well feel like a finished product. But in a few months' time, we're also highly likely to have a much more competitive contender from Google and Samsung on the table. And until then, in any case, you'll be better off buying a smartwatch that's had more time in the oven, even if you're not likely to find one that's this beautiful. To see some of those smartwatch alternatives, check out my other wearable reviews at The Mr. Mobile on YouTube, keeping in mind that if you can, you really should wait until Google unveils its new Wear OS platform in fall 2021 before buying anything. This video was produced following two weeks with a Watch 3 review sample provided by Huawei, but as always, the manufacturer had no editorial input into this review or an early preview of same, and it provided no compensation in exchange for its production. Until next time, I'm Michael Fisher. Thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.